Hello everyone, Morp here. Whether you're a fresh vault dweller or a seasoned veteran, here's my list of tips, tricks, and glitches to help you in the wasteland. Alright, let's go over how to use your power armor to run around the radiation zone without taking any rads at all. So what you need to do is you need to go directly up to the line of where the radiation zone is and walk forward until you start getting radiation and slowly step back until the exact point when you stop taking radiation. From this point, you put your power armor out and if you see uh, there's like an imaginary line and once you cross that line physically is when you get the debuff to start taking radiation. So if from this point you click on your power armor, it'll actually teleport you to your power armor, thereby getting you into the zone but never actually getting the debuff. And then you can go ahead and get out of your power armor and you can run around the whole zone. You can go and farm flux to your heart's content and not have to worry about radiation at all. Alright, if you are unlucky enough to actually fall into a fissure site and need to retrieve your precious loot, you can actually go up and find a spot where you can get close enough. You can place your power armor into the lava and make your way down. If you can get close enough to click enter, you can get in that way. Otherwise, you can kind of jump down and click enter just before you fall. And it will bug out for a little while. You'll have to wait to actually get into your power armor. But once you actually do get in, you can walk around freely and go and retrieve your loot. Make sure that you do not jump, because if you jump, as soon as you fall, you will immediately die again. So you can jump out if you have a jetpack, you can fast travel out if you can, and if you can't do either, don't forget you can log out from out there, and once you log back in, it'll put you back at the nearest fast travel point, and you'll be able to get away safely with all your stuff. Alright, a trick I used to use a lot when I was first starting out before marsupial serum and uh, jetpacks and everything. Uh, basically, it's using the teleporting power armor trick to place your power armor up on somewhere that you can actually jump up to. Place it up there and click to enter it. And sometimes if you put it up on a roof, sometimes you do have to jump a little bit and just kind of time it out. So midair you click uh, to enter and there you go. You now have access to places you couldn't before. A really annoying power armor bug is when you go to click into your power armor, you get stuck. You can spin around, you can look around, but you can't open your map. You can't open your Pip-Boy or anything. The quickest way to get out of there is to click escape on a keyboard if you're on PC or your menu button on a controller to uh, that will pop up your map. And from here, you can go down and join Daily Ops, which will get you out of the situation immediately. But if you are in a situation where you do want to stay there, such as being in an event or something, and if you're taking rads, you can actually do the same method and open up your map and find uh, any quest marker on your map and click it and scroll down and click on show in Pep Boy. And from in there, you can go down to your aid tab, you can take some rad away. And if you do have Chinese stealth armor, you can actually go and put that on and wait the minute or so it takes for the power armor to get back into your inventory. Another common bug or glitch in the game is the inability to actually open trade with other players. There is a debuff or a tag that happens when you are in an event because you're not allowed to do trades with other players in events. So somehow the game is registering you as in an event. And to fix this, it's pretty simple. You can just go to any event, just open the event and click reject to leave the event. And then when you're done, you can return to the player and you should be unbugged and able to do your trade. Right, now we have the photo mode glitch to get through any door that is inaccessible or is just locked and you don't want to pick the lock. It's pretty simple. You just walk up directly to a door and then you enter photo mode and get the camera all the way up basically to your chest and continue to push the button to continue to walk forward and as you're walking forward click the button to escape out of the photo mode and you'll continue to walk right through the door it should be easy breezy uh, there are some doors that'll be a little bit tricky and you can't quite get it if you go up right to a corner so that uh, you're not moving left or right you could do the same thing and go and click right through and boom boom and there you go that's how to glitch through a door All right, now this tip is for people that are wondering about how NPC vendors work. When you go to an NPC vendor, the list of that you're going to see in there is completely individualized to you. 
The items that you have to buy, only you see those. Other people have a completely different list, unless somebody has sold an item specifically to the vendor and then you can buy it. So if you see here, both the players are able to see the Chainsaw Flamer and the Lombo Bar. And if I go and buy the, the two of them from the vendor and then resell it, then the other player can actually see the two that were sold. But anyway, so don't worry about somebody buying the Enclave Flamer mods or whatever before you get there. Your list is your own. Alright, how your personalized loot works in this game. Since there's hundreds of thousands of items in the game, there's no way that they could keep track of everything that you touch throughout the day. So you have a basically a running list of 255 possible things that you can interact with and the game will keep track of. So if you happen to pick up something and you want to go and go to another server and you want to keep on farming it, you have to loot 255 items to get that furthest thing bottom on the list to get taken off. So there are ways that you can go about it. You can go to Summersville and loot the entire house because there's, you know, four or five hundred items in there. And this is a great method if you want to farm rare items such as the dresses in in uh, Fort Defiance or if you want to go and farm, you know, ore or anything that uh, the game is going to be generating in for you. And also on a side note, there is another side of the equation that is the server generated side. Let's say that there are particular items that are not just 100% loot, such as, you know, beer bottles and stuff like that. Stuff that's actually kind of rare, such as the Red Asylum dress or, you know, other rare things that you can find in the game. The server will have a list of its own that only can place one of those per day. So there will be certain items that if anyone on the server went and picked up that thing, there is no way that you can go and reset your loot or anything to make that respawn until the server resets the next day. If you come across a base and you're looking around and find something cool there that you'd like to have in your own camp, you can try to make contact with a person or if you can, join a team with the person. And while at the, the camp, you can actually open up the build menu just like you would at your own camp. And from in there, you can go and select on the items and hold until it opens up a blueprint. You can select all the items that you want to have in the blueprint. Click Create Blueprint, name it, and then you can take that blueprint and go on to your own camp and place it there and rock and roll. Alright, this tip has saved me a lot of time. Having a camp that is not near a water source. I have a water well, and this also works if you have a sink or anything else. So there are two options. There is the one with the timer to drink and the one to collect. If you click on collect, it will go through the entire cycle of the couple seconds and you'll only collect one water. But actually, if you do the animation one to drink and then during that couple seconds afterwards, if you just spam the crap out of the button, you can end up getting a lot more water. I, I get about 72 or so from my water well and this has saved me so much time. Zero weight items in the game do not like to go into the stash or out of the stash in stacks. If you ever find yourself sitting there and having to spam hundreds and hundreds of these things click by click by click, here's a simple trick to get them in and out. If you go to your vendor and put them up for sale, you that will actually let you do it in an entire stack. You can put it up for whatever amount it is. And while it's in your vendor, you can go and click cancel from the vendor that will put it immediately into your stash and now you can also do the reverse if it's in your vendor go to your vendor find it in there and then put it up for sale and then once it's for sale you can now click it and take the entire stack back out all right this next tip is for people that have an issue with their camp being blocked or they're ever in a situation where somebody's spending way too much caps and they want to be able to make sure that they can close it so you can use your secondary slot that you get for free or if you buy other camp slots with your atoms. But you can place your module exactly in the exact same spot on both bases and then set up a secondary base and obviously don't put a vendor on the second one. And uh, you can instantly quick o click over from the map and uh, load up your other base. You could even put a little note kind of showing that you're at max caps or you could put a little note to your discord or just basically your name just so that people 
that wanted to buy something off your vendor can come back and visit you another time. One very useful thing for me when I was starting out the game was doing the event powering up at the three power plants, Poseidon Energy Power Plant, Mononga Power Plant, and Thunder Mountain Power Plant. And completing these it gives you access to use the power of the plant to power up the fusion generators there, plus the resource collectors. Uh, but if, uh, if you do the optional thing to get the, uh, the whole plant fully repaired, um, you'll actually get access to the Poseidon power boxes that you can use at various workshops around the map. Here is a list of the power plants connected to each of the power plants. If you see here, once everything's all connected, you get 100 power that you can use at all of these bases, which is really nice for when you're starting out. Um, I did have a few bugs, like at Wade Airport, I couldn't seem to get it to work. And uh, the Poseidon power substations, you can make a base right there, but I couldn't seem to figure out how to actually get the power to work out of there. All right, thank you all so much for watching. I hope this is very helpful to everyone. There's a list of bunch of useful things down in the description there's also a link to our discord if you'd like to come and hang out with us and please make sure to click like and subscribe and click on the notification bell you can also come and follow me over on twitch at mr morp 76 and we will see you guys out in the wasteland